This is Twit. Um, speaking of seeing it, what the hell? <laughs> Glenn, right here, is an expert in typography. I want to get his view of the typographical uh, artistry of this logo. So yesterday, uh, a number of people were shocked That's when the they went to CNET.com. Yeah. Uh, let me refresh the page so you get oh. the full effect. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the typeface here that they're using? It's a kind of archaic looking. Glenn, you might, you might recognize this. There's a sans Let's serif see. menu bar, but the, but the headlines well, are in some sort of weird I serif. Have a Nifty tool. The font's called Sentinel. I have a Nifty tool called What's That Font? And I click well, on a that font. Well, that was fast. Really? Font is, tells you what the font Sentinel, is. Sentinel, huh? Monu yeah, Monument Grotesque is the, uh, the Aptly font named. that's for tech money. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it's Sentinel. These are probably wow. going to be open source fonts. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit old-fashioned. It has horrible uh, quotation marks, though, don't you think? They're oh, like straight curves. Oh, slightly, yeah. That's like when I you mean? forget to use the right quotation marks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's tilted. It's like an inch mark or a, a foot mark, rather. Uh, don't get your inch and foot marks together or the or the Stonehenge you order will be the wrong size. And there's some very odd, <laughs> like look at <laughs> TV. Look movie. at the, uh, the, yeah, the, kerning. the kerning there. The is, kerning there is very strange. Yeah. It's, I don't know, you know, there's a trend that every tech site uh, and a lot of other sites move from intricate designs that maybe were over-designed to, it's just white. It's just some black text on a white background. Well, yeah, and once you get hard past... hard to differentiate. Once you get past the, uh, the the Sentinel, you get a very bland kind of sans serif for the rest of it. So uh, they made a lot of money a, doing this redesign. It's a, a big redesign. Wow, look at that. A, a grotesque, by the way, is just a, uh, a sans serif font. It's oh, okay. Just, uh, yeah. It's we're the old old term so, for it. Gothic. It used to be called, also oh, yeah, called gothic, gothic, not the fancy yeah, yeah. kind. is yeah. also called... Yeah. Like, uh, so, Glenn, when I, when I started Entertainment Weekly, um, I... Um, we had a we had a logo that was controversial because it was it was tw tilted and they didn't like it and da 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 mm -hmm. and so the the bosses came after us going fix this and you got to do this you got to do that so I go after the design director and by the way we had design problems but he said this the, the font was grotesque I said well can you find something that's not <laughs> grotesque <laughs> how about this you black other, letter do you like story? that it's, it's, we're, we're doing font Hel Helvetica here. Helvetica is de derived from uh, was it accidents grotesque is the the is like the the predecessor. So what and is the what, what, is, what is the etymology of grotesque? That's very strange. Oh, it's one of these German. It's a, oh, it's one of those German yeah. things. It's uh there's a German derivation of it. So it doesn't mean grotesque as we speak it. It's, right. Um, it's it's a specific. Uh, Thing that became applied to it, like a uh, uh, what's the thing? Like a not burlesque. Um, uh, you talk about something being over elaborate. Uh, um, oh, um, um, rococo? No. Baroque. Yeah, ro oh, no, uh, uh, baroque, baroque. Right. It's kind of like baroque. grotesque is just a combination word yeah. that comes from that. So it's, but it sounds, it it meant more like interesting and fantastic. And so it was a different, when this, when serifs were everything, then a grotesque was a different, was used for display faces. The same thing like a gothic, uh, like Franklin, uh, the Franklin Gothic typeface is a classic sans serif from before sans serifs were designed like Helvetica. Helvetica kind of ushered in a new way of designing typefaces without serifs. Um, so, yeah, you can get these hilarious names for uh, typefaces. So it was originally G-R-O-T-E-S-K. Yeah, um, yeah. Not the, not the traditional grotesque. Leo, did you know that there was a typographer, a, a type designer who was Hitler's prisoner? No. I don't know about this at all. You don't? Oh, goody. Oh, no. I don't want to glad. Um, so, so... Um, uh, you know, you, you've seen the Gutenberg uh, uh, t type, which is which is Gothic, and not in our sense. Gothic is oddly we over here call that Helvetica, but Gothic there is is that stuff that looks like Gothic Cathedral, right? And it's what the German publications all used. And there was actually a debate in the German Parliament about what the official font of Germany should be, and mm. went back and forth, and 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 Fraktur won, and Hitler liked it for a while. But uh, then he decided that um, uh, it shouldn't be because all the lands they were conquering couldn't read it. Uh. And so they decided it was a Jewish font. Oh, Lord. Meanwhile, famous there's famous. a guy <laughs> named Jan uh, Chichold. Uh, I'm, I'm going to mispronounce his name. Well, um, that's exactly, you pronounced it exactly correctly, though. Good. <laughs> uh, who pronounced, uh, wrote a book called The New Typography in which he called for a single typeface without or ornamentation, no serifs, no nothing. And um, he condemned the German fra fracture, that it was uh, the, the exclusivist character of that. And this was a dangerous view. 
And so um, he said that, that his views would have died anyway, but a few years after his book, Hitler came, he was accused of creating un-German typography and art. And so they arrested him for his font. And he got a oh. passport out to leave Germany and became the designer of Penguin. Well, I'll be D damned. I can tell you, so Fraktur was so associated with German. This is a quote I, I'd learned a few years ago. Uh, Otto von Bismarck, the, you know, the, um, oh, what was he? You know, he's the uh, chancellor of Germany he was in chancellor. the 19th century. President. Uh, too, yeah, I think president, so. sorry. And he said, he said, can I, if I can speak some German, it's Deutsche Bücher in Latinische Buchstabe lese ich nicht, which is, I don't read German books in Latin letters. He was he would oh, send them back wow. if someone sent yeah. him a someone so was sent everything him something in, in fractor. Yeah, it was impossible to read. It's very difficult. I used to read some when I took German classes. You get a book that was printed uh, oh, it's, in an older it's book. Oh, it's hard. Oh, it's and so it, the hard. The K and the L look. It's it was hard for. The, I believe I read a statistic. I think it was uh, people who read Fraktur read it forty percent more slowly than reading the same text in uh, Latin alphabet. Huh. It uh, does fit the pronunciation of German, though. Yeah, it's very very, very, German very nicely. I always I think if I look at that, see now I'm I'm be I'm becoming literate. I always look at this and say, well, it's like Gothic or something, but Fraktur is very. It's a, Specific. It's also it's called gothic, gothic, but it's yeah. yeah it's yeah. Fraktur was a very, very specific, specific. Face. But yeah, it's got yeah. a uh, there's yeah. a there's a typeface designer who um, designed a uh, this guy uh, named uh, uh, Bertold Volpe who uh, designed Albertus, which is a face. Once you see it, you will see it everywhere. It was used in the Prisoner 1960s Prisoner TV series. Uh, it's just ubiquitous for having a certain kind of um, mm -hmm. it feels mm -hmm. like a unique appearance, but it is everywhere. And uh, Volpe was Jewish, and he had to leave over. You know, sort of over typeface design also in the 30s because he was no longer allowed to work, even though he had uh, he had just developed, in fact, a very nice fracture face and then went to England, was sponsored to go there, was sent to Australia by boat during the war through U-boat infested waters with other German nationals, even though he had to flee Germany. Then they brought him back. And um, lived a long, happy life and made a lot of very nice book covers. I shall be using Albertus from now on it's a wonderful in all of, my, all of my printing. And instead of the quick brown fox, I'm going to start saying Walt's bad nymph for <laughs> quick jigs vex. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> do, you, you know, do you spend a lot of money, Glenn, on fonts and typeface, uh, digital fonts? I don't. I have. Uh, I have one a bunch could. Of well, you could. Yeah. You could blow a oh, yeah. fortune on them, which is great too, because the market for them is smaller. Uh, there's some great stories too. Is the person who developed the typeface you think of as the Harry Potter typeface that's yeah. used on merchandise? Uh, it's guy uh, uh, Rich Kegler of P22. Uh, he's not allowed to disclose the term, so if you ask him, he can't talk about it. But uh, was it Warner Brothers owned it at the time? They licensed the font for a certain usage. Then they stuck it on merchandise without having the license for. It. So I expect there were a lot of zeros behind whatever number that was settled for. Wow. Uh, but it was right when Harry Potter was incredibly popular. So if you, you'll <laughs> see a face, you'll be like, oh, that's that face. That's that Harry Potter face. And it's because of that popularization. Uh, but I, I own a bunch of P22 fonts, I own some monotype fonts. But I bought a lot of typefaces a long time ago. Uh, yeah, it's not that one. There's one, it's on like merchandises and bags and things. It's kind of, uh, the book, uh, sometimes you'll see Albertus on uh, Harry Potter. Huh. Sorry, I don't mean to devolve into the... No, 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 no. no. And I've got yeah, one more I'll question. I'll warn you, Leo. We could, we could do I this would, I, would, we could do this I mean, I'm day. so sick of Twitter. I'd much rather talk about this. Uh, <laughs> I, I, we will get to the Google uh, da, uh, Google uh, quarterly uh, results in just a second. But uh, I, I want to ask you... The, so there are a lot of free fonts. For instance, this Albertus is being offered for free on cofonts.com. Are those not as good as, you know, the fonts that you might get from well-known foundries that cost hundreds of dollars? Yes, yeah, because uh, in the United States specifically and in certain other countries in the world, you can't copyright the appearance of a typeface. You can un only copyright the underlying ah. uh, code that makes up the typeface. So someone right. can't copy your PostScript or OpenType code and produce it. But after some lawsuits, I want to say in the 90s about it, uh, it became clear that you could essentially re-outline typefaces and then release them. So when you buy, the, but the, the key thing is there's all the kerning uh, and um, special tweaking yeah. that goes into a font. They can't take that because that's software. So the makers of duplicate fonts, um, some of them are adaptations and are perfectly good fonts in their own right. And you can go to Google Fonts and um, there's a group called, uh, is it ISIL? It's, uh, there's a group that supports 
uh, lesser used uh, typefaces or lesser used scripts that are used for typefaces. So uh, Native American languages and languages in, in Asia and other countries where they have developed really high quality typefaces, uh, which often include Latin characters and characters in these languages that aren't otherwise supported and give them away for free. So you can go and find super high quality free numbers of or, them is phenomenal what's available oh my now. Gosh. where would it's i free. find that because i i am a font nerd but i don't want to i've spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars yes. on fonts for no good reason uh and i would like good quality fonts you know what most uh, most google most uh, linux and uh, mac distributions offer a lot of fonts for free for download the nerd fonts and so forth there i uh, collect programming fonts monotype fonts um where can I go I'm, to get good fonts? <laughs> I'm for free. Out on the name of this group. Well, I mean, Google Fonts is a great source, and if you if you literally search on, um, I wish I could remember the name of this. I compiled a list at one point, uh, but there are places that will t that list. Uh, if you can find a place that lists Google Fonts and some other foundries, you'll find lists of typefaces that are freely licensable but designed you know in-house essentially or designers contribute okay. and uh, they're often licensed for you know unlimited use or sometimes for non-commercial purposes but uh, yeah if you find Albertus in most places that's a, a copied version and um, and it won't have the quality of it and uh, actually a friend of mine a fellow I became friends with because he did the new version of Albertus for monotype uh, yeah. uh, Toshio Magari he developed a kind of revival version of Albertus that is Fantastic and comes in Greek and Russian, uh, Cyrillic, and uh, has a little picture of its designer, uh, Bertolt Volpe, as one of the characters. It's very oh, that's cool. Do you have a, a, uh, a of favorite him. body type font? Oh gosh, I'm a, I am a big fan of Minion. I've used a lot. I of like Minion, Minion a, too. That's an Adobe. Uh, yeah, that's font. from the '80s. Is Roger Slimback uh, designed yeah. that? And uh, it's just an amazingly versatile typeface. I use a lot of, um, I use Bembo sometimes. Again, that's a, ain't, that's a font that dates back to the, dates back that's to the uh, Hypnero Tamakia Polyphily, the, uh, a book printed in the 1400s, uh, about dreams. Um, so there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of typefaces like that. There's a great story, you know, about how this fellow in, uh, who I, I got to meet him when I was in London, he figured out that, uh, well, in the 1910s, this person who was slowly losing his mind had had a yeah, falling out answer. with, uh, with uh, he was a printer and he had a falling out with his business partner. And the business partner agreed to let the printer keep the typefaces and the punches from which they are made until uh, some certain period of time, I think until his death or mm -hmm. something like that. And so the guy who's losing his mind slowly starts dumping all of the type into the Thames. He carries <gasps> pounds of it in it's his pockets. It's the pocket, most beautiful font over. ever, the Dove's Bible yeah. Font. Oh, it's it incredible. Is, it, is, it, it is magnificent. Uh, Thomas Cobden Sanderson. Yes, Cobden Sanderson. And you can read his journals and you can see how the man, it's really sad. He's working with lead. Maybe he was having lead poisoning. I don't know. And then when it's all done, he triumphantly announces that he dumped it all. Well, well. so this fellow, Robert Green, uh, says, well, what if I could figure out where it was? And he pinpoints where he thinks it is and he finds type. And then he uh, hires the divers from the city of London and they dive yeah. and they retrieve, uh, I don't know, hundred odd pieces. I've been to his home and held some of the dove type in my hand. Oh. And it's, what a wonderful story. Now, the funny part is I have found two, maybe three other stories in which type has been thrown in a pit of, in a, a pit of peak <laughs> or as a, in despair into a body of water. So type I, designers I are on, nutty people. They are maybe it's the lead, huh? Maybe it's yeah. the lead, yeah. I have a book I want to write called The Lead Heave in the Lake. I think something <laughs> as bad as that. But I don't know. You know. If you look up Dove Bible... You'll see what I think is the most gorgeous. Font well, there's ever. a good, and I'm showing it right now, a good BBC uh, yes, news story on the whole recovery of the fonts and the, yeah. uh, for the of the type and, and all of that. You it's can really... buy Robert has a modern rendition. He has spent so much time looking at the work of the Dove Press. And, this is, uh, this is if, tell me if Dove's I'm wrong Press. here. This is derived from what is my favorite base font, which is Jansen. That's right. Uh, That's right. So it's a typeface. Oh, my God. We, 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 have, we have fallen the into the type hole here. Yeah, told sorry. This is what happens. <laughs> this is what happens. We're, you know, I love, you. I love it, though. I love it. I love it. up here with type. It's, it's, a fast, it's a very nerdy, but it's fascinating. By the way, if you go to Glenn.fun, what is that font? Because that is a nice... You've chosen a nice typeface for your uh, What if website. I... Uh, now you have to write... I think it's... Uh, now, and, of course, the one typeface I don't know is the one that's on my own site. <laughs> the it's one you mentioned. chose. It is... I have to load it and use my tool. It it's a very called, nice, it's, grotesque oh, it's, font. 
it's Museo Sans. Museo, it's, uh, okay. it's a modern typeface that comes yeah. in lots of weights. And uh, that's the other way you can do it, too, is if you have an Adobe... This is going to sound like an ad. It is not an ad. It's not an ad. If you have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, they include what we used to I be do. a former service they bought, have all of Typekit. Yeah. And with Typekit, you get a li uh, included. You Hundreds. can use... Yeah. Tons of fonts, yeah. including as web fonts. Many of them are available. So right. I have uh, it linked to a bunch of sites. Is I do, the uh, asterisk I here a this. dingbat, or is it an actual the actual asterisk? It's a Unicode character, so it's oh. a rendition in Museo Sans of an eight-pointed star. And the funny Love part, it. if you go on mobile, it's a totally different ah. character. Ah. Oh, you want to talk about Unicode now? I, sure. Oh, <laughs> Unicode. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, you know this I'm is the greatest thing the about being a nerd uh, is or a geek is it doesn't matter what the topic is if we can no, dive deep and get some passion it's fascinating and I love I love going down that rabbit hole so much so much there's fun. such great characters in, in in the font world it's it, you'd be you'd be surprised that that story Glenn just told is my very favorite it, it's got to be the best the, the only I never great uh, Glenn I know you study this formally you uh, you you know you're actually a, a designer and you've and you've You've actually, you says in your webpage, the last a person ever apprenticed as a typesetter in the world. I, I may be exaggerating, but pretty close. It feels like last generation, at least. The only thing I know is, and it's a wonderful book I've recommended many, many times, is Stop Stealing Sheep. Oh, yeah. Eric Speakerman. Yeah. Yeah. He, I was just, funny, I just was exchanging tweets with him on uh, on the Twitter machine. It's why part of why I know him is because of Twitter. Uh, fantastic designer, typeface designer, very interesting guy. I have a giant book. If you look behind me, oh, it's too low, low below. It's a book called, uh, uh, what is it? Hello, I am Eric. And it's about, it's written about him. Uh, very interesting cat. I like this book so much, apparently I've purchased it twice, according to Amazon. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was as a gift. I don't know. That's good. Uh, He's been Eric developed this way of doing what he calls digital letterpress, is he uses a, a modern machine that makes oh. plates from digital files in a very particular way. He had to spend 60,000 euros to modify an off-the-shelf device, and then he can print... On a, an, on a letterpress, on a, a automated, like motorized, sort of one of the last modern letterpresses, uh, these very high quality books. Uh, so he's done, a, you know, relatively small series, but uh, I have a few of them and they, they are absolutely letterpress. They feel like it, but they're this interesting hybrid between old and new. And I mean, that still the has the bite, most fun. right? Yeah, yeah, it's the bite. It's very black bite. ink because letterpress ink is often much blacker than the that you can use with offset because of the way it applies to paper. And anyway, it's the intersection between that old and new that I think is the most fun. Is there's a lot of stuff that's you know VR and AR is totally new and it's its own beast. But where you can hit physical and digital things together, I just think you know, 2D printing and 3D uh, 3D cutting and 3D printing that kind of thing. Somebody in our IRC chat has discovered the Unicode for the eight-pointed star and put it in our okay. IRC chat. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a client look, that does uh, Unicode, it really looks good. It's nice. I had to look it up myself. A warning a is in iOS, it looks like a weird, uh, it's a little weird. It's uh, like a little uh, starburst instead of this beautiful oh, thing that you can see bad. in a desktop browser. It's really nice. Again, yeah. Unicode, every every platform, a new, uh, a new experience of what the character <laughs> might be. <laughs>